，坐落于加州湾区东部的乌伦市，地理位置上紧邻三藩市。作为加州人口第八大的城市，乌伦市也和三藩市、圣何西共同组成湾区三大主要城市。乌伦有百分之十五点七六的亚裔人口，同时也拥有北加州第二大的中国城，仅次于三藩市。We've been a sanctuary city, and to see hate rear its ugly head in this city was devastating. 从 Uber 司机被青少年开枪打死，到女牙医在路边无端被杀，短短五个星期之内，乌伦市小西贡一带有两位华人的性命被无情地夺走。这种悲剧要上演多少次才会被社会引起重视？大家好，欢迎收看《仇恨边缘》，我是主持人张新义。今天我们来到乌伦市政厅，一起来和市长薛立比来聊一聊乌伦市的仇恨犯罪。Hi, Mayor Shaev. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm very good. <laughs> Or as we say in Oakland, "Daigaho." That's、uh, Cantonese. Means how are you? Yeah.、Um, as we all know that you were born and grow up in Oakland, so this is your hometown. It is. How have you seen the city change over the decades? Well, let me start with what hasn't changed, and that is we have always been a city that is proud of our diversity. We've been one of the first sanctuary cities in America that said we welcome everyone, no matter where you come from, no matter how you got here. We love the diversity of Oakland, and so growing up in this city, you know, learning to eat with chopsticks at the same time I learned to eat with a fork, you know, that that's something that you get from living in Oakland.、Yeah. What I have seen is the shift in our demographics, and our Asian community has grown. As has our Latino community, and to see Chinatown be so vibrant, to see the development that has come, particularly over this last decade,、uh, right here in downtown, we've added about 18,000 new homes in Oakland because we want everyone to enjoy the beautiful diversity of our city.、Mm. So, how do you feel about being mayor of Oakland for eight years? Well, I'm I'm very proud. I'm in love with my city. I'm still in love with my city, but I don't want to sugarcoat our challenges. And safety is the thing that is threatening how people feel, not just about Oakland, but about government, about their communities. And we have to put an end to that fear and to the harm that is done through crime. Yeah. Before we talk about the challenge, what accomplishment are you most proud of? Well, I'm most proud that I've actually started fixing the roads. the The unsexy potholes are things that are really important that Oakland didn't have a plan on, and now we have broken all records、uh, in replacing our roads and making them safer and smoother. I'm proud that we have formed partnerships to make real progress in some of our most vexing areas,、um, while we also tragically are seeing a spike in gun violence, like the rest of the country is.、Uh, during my time as mayor, we saw the, the lowest murder rate that we had ever had in Oakland's history, over a four consecutive year period.、Uh, so that that reduction in harm. Is something I'm very proud of, as well as our innovations in addressing the homelessness and housing crisis. And finally,、um, I really value education, and I believe in investing in our next generation. And so, things like the Oakland Promise, where I'm leaving Oakland with something called the Generation Fund. That will provide every low-income baby born in Oakland,、uh, every public school graduate who has a need, to actually get a scholarship to continue their education post high school, for a whole generation. So I'm very proud of sending that message to our children that we believe in them and we have already invested in their futures. Let's talk about hate crime.、Um, I know this is a heavy topic, but 
this is ongoing issue that's happening in our whole nation. And uh, what did Oakland experience on hate crime this two or three years? It was heartbreaking at the beginning of the pandemic to see something that Oakland has always stood against. You know, we've been a city of tolerance. We've been a sanctuary city. And to see hate rear its ugly head in this city was devastating. But we saw it at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, led by the President of the United States, trying to blame the Asian community for the pandemic. And we saw that in impacts to the incredible small businesses in our Chinatown. But most disturbingly, we saw instances of hate and violence, particularly against our Asian elders. Why do you think we are seeing a surge of hate crime that targeting Asian, especially Asian elderly and women? Well, first, we have to get into people's mindsets to love everyone to honor different cultures, people that look different, to, to recognize our shared humanity. Yeah. And we know that the pandemic exacerbated mental health issues, issues of anger and desperation and disconnectedness that were already present but have only gotten worse. And then second, people are preying on stereotypes we saw a big increase in crime around the Lunar New Year, uh, this perception that Asian people would be carrying cash on them and that they were uh, not just easy targets, but profitable targets. Uh, that type of mindset is horrific. And we have to educate our Asian community that that is present and how to be prepared and protected against it. Yeah. Before we continue to talk about hate crime, let's take a break. The terrible reality, hate crimes against Asian Americans are on the rise. The trauma is felt everywhere, including right here at home. We will not allow hate to continue. From Oakland. To San Francisco. To San Jose. We are with you. We stand by you. And we will fight for you. We will not tolerate violence. We will hold perpetrators accountable. The Bay Area is your home. You, you are, are welcome, welcome here. 欢迎回到仇恨边缘，让我们继续和乌伦市市长薛立比一起来聊一聊这座城市的仇恨犯罪。Okay, Mayor Shaf, let's keep keep talking about hate crime. Most of the AAPI hate crime we've been seeing on the TV and the news are African Americans attacking Asian elderly and women. Do you think? That's a fact in reality, or is there any miscommunication or misunderstanding between those two communities? We have to fight negative racial stereotypes in all places.、Um, whether or not that is statistically true, we can never afford to create fear between two groups. We know from studies that. That there is a terrible bias that we often our brains generate based on race, based on skin color, and we have to get through that. We cannot afford to stereotype one another, because we all can be、um, helpful to each other. We all have to build this safe community. And one silver lining that we've seen that's come out of this crisis of anti-Asian hate is solidarity. Between the African American community and the Asian community, that is something that has been very strong in Oakland, and we see it in the volunteers that have come out. This community has responded so beautifully to this threat, and it's not just younger Asians that have come out to be volunteer escorts and ambassadors in Chinatown, in the areas that we have high concentrations, particularly of elderly and frail Asian seniors. It's it's African Americans, it's Caucasians, it's people of every race and ethnicity and belief system that just want to show compassion and care for one another.、Mm -hmm. So, as a mayor of Oakland, what have you done to combat the hate crime that targeting Asian community? Two specific things: one, sending a clear message: hate has no place here. 
And I reached out to the mayors of San Francisco and San Jose, a much stronger message all together as the three Bay Area mayors. And we put together a beautiful PSA in just literally within a week that, thank you for airing it, it aired on stations throughout the Bay Area to send that message. The second thing that I've tried to do as mayor is really encourage people to report these crimes. When I look at the crime statistics in Oakland, there's very few reported hate crimes. They often get reported as something else. And yet we know um, from the trusted people at Asian Health Services, the people who come visit them with fear, with depression, with anxiety, because they feel that they have been subjected to hate. We know that people who feel comfortable reporting what has happened to them to the website and organization Stop AAPI Hate, an excellent resource for everyone. We know people feel more comfortable coming forward to those trusted organizations than to us as government. And so one is mayor, I've sent the message that you should not feel shame in reporting something as a hate crime if that is how you experienced it. And second, we immediately added an Asian a liaison officer, Chinese speaking, to Chinatown. People love her. And this officer has created a culturally competent link between our police department and that community. Yeah, I think that's very true. And uh, thanks for recognizing this issue in the very beginning of the hate crime. And uh, also it's true that uh, for Asian community, we tend to be silenced when the things happen. Um, there's two reasons they don't call the police or report. One is they feel shameful, for somehow it's their fault. Um, second is um, they think if they call the police, they wouldn't do anything about it. So what's your advice for the victim when they uh, experience the hate crime? We want you to call, to report. You have a whole community of people around you that want to help you heal from what is not just a trauma of a crime being committed, but the feeling that you have been targeted for no other reason than your identity. We want to stand up against that as well as support victims in moving through that trauma. People should feel like they can enjoy their community, go out and shop and be on the street and say hello to strangers without fear. Uh, they should be able to drive and go home at night without fear that someone will harm them or take what they have worked so hard to earn. And that is something that we believe is everyone's right and the government is here to help both through these liaison officers to help you navigate our system, but also with these trusted community resources like Asian Health Services, like Stop AAPI Hate, which was founded by an Oaklander that I have worked with for more than 20 years, Russell Jung. So we just wanna celebrate the heroes in our community that are saying, stand up, demand the dignity the safety that is your right as a person who lives in Oakland and in America. Yeah, well put. Um, before we talk about the future and resources, let's take a break. Welcome I'm going to bring up two cases that two tragedy that happened in July and August. There are two Asian people get shot to death uh, in little Saigon area. One is the Uber driver Patrick Fong, another is dentist Li Yishu. So Asian community feel angry and scared at the same time. Uh, so what's your advice for the community to heal from this ongoing issue? Well, know that we take both these tragedies extremely seriously. I literally got an update from our chief yesterday in Lily Shu's case. Uh, it is a very active investigation. There are some leads, and we are hoping to bring this community, not just her family who our hearts go out to, 
but the whole community a sense of justice and closure. And I commend our police chief as we work to increase police staffing, which we are very serious about doing. Uh, we just were able to add eight new officers to the investigations division so that we can solve crimes like this. We can give the community and families that sense of justice because the person who did their loved one harm is brought to justice and held accountable for these heinous, senseless acts. Mm. But do you think how can we react to those tragedy when we see those horrible things that targeting Asian community? How can we heal from it? Well, one is to recognize how traumatizing they are for us emotionally. Um, so the city of Oakland has victim services. We have access for free to therapists, to people that can actually help people process that grief and anxiety and heal from it. And we have great organizations like Asian Health Services that has really worked to increase their mental health offerings as well as to reduce the stigma, especially in the Asian community, that it is a sign of strength to ask for help, particularly around your mental health. And then secondly, it is to do everything that we can to prevent these kinds of tragedies from ever happening again. And I want to commend our Asian community for not only standing up these huge cores of volunteer security ambassadors, but to also uh, secure vol uh, donations for security cameras throughout uh, Chinatown, to purchase a drone for our police department that aids in, in really maintaining safety as well as Lord forbid something happens to have the evidence so that we can hold that person accountable and remove them from where they can do further harm. Yeah, well put. Uh, we just mentioned that how you met Russell Zhang. How did you uh, know Russell Zhang, which is the co-founder of Stop AAPI Hate, this organization? Long history. Yeah. And Hate crimes against the Asian community have seen many different forms over time. Um, and I'm very proud that Russell Jung, the founder of Stop AAPI Hate, is an Oaklander. And he is one of the first community activists that I met when I took my first job in Oakland City Hall almost a quarter of a century ago. Back in 19... Early 1999. Wow. And my first assignment was to help the tenants of Oak Park Apartments. And Russell Jung lived there and had helped organize the tenants to fight against what were some of the most atrocious, horrible living conditions that you could ever imagine. Raw sewage overflowing from people's toilets and soaking their carpets and their baby's clothing on a regular basis. Uh, empty apartments left open and, and drug addicts and prostitutes using them. I saw a little boy pick up a used syringe that had had heroin in it, left in the courtyard where children were supposed to play. And what we found was that the landlord was targeting Southeast Asian immigrants and Central American immigrants, knowing they didn't speak the language, knowing they were afraid to complain to government, knowing that they may or may not have legal status in this country, and completely abusing them, taking their money for rent and subjecting them to these horrific conditions. And Russell was the one who organized those tenants. We sued the landlord. We succeeded in winning more than a million dollars for the families that had lived through those conditions and turned that building over to Ibaltsi, who developed it as permanent, supportive, um, family affordable housing with you know, a computer center and a community garden. And it's just a beautiful place for these, this immigrant community to live in peace and health. So based on your knowledge and experience uh, being the public servant for so many years, what do you think, how can we stop the hate crime from happening in the first place? Well, teaching tolerance, fighting against discrimination, and even implicit or subconscious bias. 
slowing ourselves down, ensuring that we have friends from different cultures, that we make an effort to get to know people that aren't from our same backgrounds, creating schools where our children are engaging with the full, beautiful diversity of Oakland and the world, and stopping all forms of crime, not just hatred, but everyone deserves to live with a sense of safety. That is required you know, for our mental health, uh, as well as for a thriving city. And so we are gonna do everything that we can to make this city safe, to stop people from being harmed, to stop people from robbing and stealing things from others. That is what we have to do while we continue to build that tolerance and love and celebration of diversity. Yeah. Then what's the next after your term ends? Well, I promise you I will work in public service for the rest of my life. I want to improve public systems so they better serve particularly those that they have not served well uh, over time. And our public systems are not succeeding in doing that for everyone. So I promise you I'll work in public uh, service. What that looks like, I will let everyone know next year. Thank you, Mary Chef. That's such a wonderful conversation with you. Thank you for covering this important story. Yeah. 好，今天的节目就告一段落。仇恨边缘是一档聚焦反亚裔仇恨犯罪的访谈节目。我们今后还会请到更多的政界人士以及社区领袖一起来探讨仇恨犯罪。我们也希望这个节目被更多需要了解和需要帮助的人看到。让我们共同努力，把周围变成一个充满爱而不是恨的地方。我是主持人张新义，我们下期节目见。正在收看节目的你，如果有任何问题想要问我们的来宾，欢迎在评论区留言，我们会仔细查看每一条评论，并联系该嘉宾帮忙解答。让我们共同努力，为停止仇恨犯罪贡献一份力量。